five, three, one. Hi guys, Adam from Mudos Panel Builders and today we're excited to show you the installation of the new Garmin GHA 15 height advisor. For those who don't know, this is kind of a bona fide radar altimeter. Uh, so it, it actually, this is actually a radio device. You put this on the bottom of the aircraft and then it will shoot a radio signal out and receive it back and then that's how it knows how far off the ground you are. So we're putting this on this Sling TSI here. Uh, as kind of a test installation to see where it's going to have to go. One thing about these is the installation is pretty uh, strict on where it can go. Uh, the main item that you have to worry about is protrusions from the airframe that get into a 120 degree cone around this antenna. Uh, and then you do have to worry about other things like getting as close to the center of pitch and roll as you can, making sure that when it's on the airframe, it's not tilted too far forward or after left and right, that it's as close to flat as possible. Uh, I did want to show you a couple of things that we're providing to our customers um, with Sling Aircraft that want to retrofit this. So put this down. First thing is we've got an installation doubler, just like all the rest of the antennas that we work with. Uh, this has the nut plates already installed and everything. So when you drill the holes, you can pop this in on the inside and just screw it down. We have a harness as well. So this harness goes into the TC connector and jumps off of it. The TC connector we'll show you is underneath the rear passenger seat on the left side. And uh, so you just disconnect it, put this in line and then you've got your wiring coming off of that. There are uh, different pins than the other Garmin connectors that come with this unit. And uh, as such, you need a specialized um, positioner for the crimp tool. So we do pre-terminate these. However, the connector itself is quite fancy and uh, it's waterproof and all these things and it's quite bulky. So the problem is, is this is not gonna necessarily be able to run through different areas of the airframe that the wiring needs to go through. So we are having to leave this connector off, but we're at least terminating the wires for you to get that part out of the way. Garmin includes a couple of other items like these uh, blanks for the connector, as well as this uh, insertion and extraction tool. The reason this tool is here is not for the extraction because it's the same as the other ones. It's actually for the insertion of the pins. Because this connector is weather packed, these pins are a little bit more challenging to push in versus a standard D-sub uh, connector. So this helps with that and gets the pin seated correctly. So before we proceed too far with the installation, the first thing we need to do is a site survey on this aircraft to determine the best location. We actually 3D printed this here. So this is the footprint of the unit. And then we've made this cone at 120 degrees. And so what we're gonna do is just kind of put this on the bottom of the aircraft in different areas and extend this cone out with a piece of wire or a ruler or something, just to make sure that we are free of uh, protrusions in that range. Once we find that location, uh, then we're gonna go ahead and get it mounted. Now, one thing of note, um, depending on whether you put the harness in yourself or if you went through a build center, the location, particularly of antennas on the bottom of the aircraft, might be different in your airframe versus this one. Uh, so you do have to do this site survey and make sure that you're not going to be in range of an antenna uh, because since it is a radar altimeter, it's just gonna pick up on the first thing that it sees and feed that back as your high AGL. So if it's seeing the antenna all the time, it's not gonna work. So with all that in mind, let's go ahead and get started on the installation on this aircraft and we'll show you how it goes along the way. Okay, so we've got the GHA installed in the aircraft. So to recap what we did uh, on this particular airplane, uh, first we had to actually move the COM2 antenna because we used its location for the GHA antenna um, that happened to work out to be a good spot to uh, keep that 120 degree cone of clearance. Uh, then we moved the COM2 antenna back a little bit, got our harness routed, pinned the wires into the connector, and then turned it on. Um, so when, when we get into the airplane to uh, get ready to do the flight test, we'll show you a little bit of the configuration and how that works. And then we'll go fly and uh, make sure that it's happy and is uh, doing its job. We'll listen to the callouts in the headset as well. And then uh, we'll consider this installation complete. 
for anybody that uses our antenna locations that we've been recommending, uh, in particular with the COM2 antenna on the bottom, what we're going to do is we have a relocation kit for that antenna that we're going to be providing, uh, as well as uh, obviously the new mounting solution for the GHA to go in its place. This will require some holes to be drilled on the airframe, so obviously you're going to want to be careful doing that, uh, but we will have templates to make it as easy as possible for you. For the amateur that's doing this, we would expect you know maybe a day to do this. It took us you know, probably three or four hours um, with all the movement that I had to get done. So for the, for the guy at home, you know, a day should be plenty of time to get all that completed. If you have any questions about this when you're installing in your aircraft uh, and you need any help or anything, uh, please feel free to get in touch with us. You can use our normal channels, phone, email. If you have any questions uh, otherwise about how the system works, you can use the comment section below and uh, ask there. Uh, so now let's go ahead and get the pre-flight completed and let's get up in the air and we'll meet you back there. All right, so here we're on config mode. Setting this up is very easy. First thing you do is come over to LRU, go down to radio AGL sensor and make sure that's enabled. We'll come back to the main page here and we'll scroll all the way down and we'll hit radio AGL right here. And then what you want to do is just make sure that your antenna height is set properly. The maximum displayed height, I'm actually going to change this uh, to 500. Um, and then you can set that to whatever you want, but I think 500 is appropriate. That's when the GHA uh, actually picks up the, uh, the ground returns anyways. Uh, and then audio alerts, alerts, you can change this to kind of how you want it. So I have enable all, but you can actually set ranges here. So maybe you only want to hear 300, 200, 100, so you can do that. Maybe you don't want to hear any audio alerts for some reason. Uh, so we'll just leave that to enable all. And uh, now we are ready to fly. We'll just save and reboot and uh, get going. So we're back in uh, Left Allen at uh, LaPierre. And uh, well, we're gonna watch the radar altimeter as it reads out. Uh, so, like last time, we're expecting now that it comes up at about 540 feet. Uh, the 500 foot call out is GPS based, so it's going to say roughly 470 on there before we hear that, that 500 foot call out. And then from 300 on down, it's going to be uh, all rad out from there. Alright, so there's 500 foot AGL. It came up once again at about 540, 530. 500. There's your GPS call out a little late. Here, traffic. Environmental 612, drive the Victor's turning final 36. 300. I'm going to point out real quick as we were going through 300 feet, as we did balloon up just a little bit and went past 300 on the other side, so it went 310, 320. 200. And then as it came back to 300, it didn't call it again. So Garmin's obviously programmed in a little bit of hysteresis into that so that it doesn't give you nuisance alerts. Okay, so that's the flight test complete. As you can see, it worked pretty well. Um, the idea that you can hear in your headset how high you are off the ground, as well as the cadence and how quickly that altitude is coming down, you know, really helps you flare, I guess, more smartly, for lack of a better term. So that's going to be really cool for, for I mean, anybody, honestly. Garmin's main uh, target with this system, I believe, is going to be your backcountry flyers uh, that are going into unimproved areas. Perhaps float planes uh, might use this as well and, and really get enjoyment out of it. Even for this, you know, aircraft that's only ever going to see pavement runways, it's still pretty cool to have. It's still nice. And even though you can't use it for IFR approaches legally, it is a great situational awareness tool for that. Once you do hit that 300 foot AGL and you start getting those call outs while you're you know doing an ILS approach let's say down 200 feet that's going to be really really handy so we're uh, we're looking forward to that 
Again, if you have any questions or anything, please feel free to get a hold of us. We're here to help, particularly the guys that uh, are retrofitting these into their slings now. For anybody who is a customer in the future that wants this, please let us know now. These systems do have a little bit of a lead time on them. Also, it allows us the opportunity to make any modifications to your system now uh, that might need to be done so that the installation will be a little bit smoother for you. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, uh, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you can get notified of more videos like this. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.